This is a guide to charging lithium polymer or LiPo batteries in parallel and uh, I'm not going to go into the standard settings of a charger or charging batteries uh, individually so make sure that you're fully familiar with your batteries and how you should charge them and familiar with your charger. So assuming you do have a bit of knowledge I also have to say that the safety rules still apply um, when you're charging lipos make sure that you um, do them in a safe place um, in a fireproof container or bag <clears throat> and make sure that you monitor the cells as they're uh, as they're charging to make sure there's no problems otherwise you could uh, end up with a with a fire so with those safety uh, concerns covered uh, let's talk about parallel charging and So just to be clear about what we're talking about here, um, connecting batteries together in parallel means that the voltage stays the same, but the capacity doubles. So in this case, we've got two 2.2 ampere hour batteries. So when they're connected together in parallel, you end up with one um, battery, which is 4.4 ampere hours, but the, um, the voltage stays the same. When you're charging in parallel, you can mix different capacities, but never mix the, um, the a, a three cell with a four cell. So number of cells must remain the same. So these packs are both three cells. One's a 2.65 amp per hour, and the other one is a 2.2. Absolutely fine to charge them up together. So why bother with uh, parallel charging? What's the advantage? Well, quite simply, uh, it saves you an awful lot of time. You can set, you can charge up 10 batteries in uh, under two hours. If you were to plug each of the batteries in individually and they're balanced ports uh, to the charger and charge them individually, each battery would take uh, quite a while um, because, they all, because the battery has to go through its balancing phase. When they're all plugged in together, it means that each individual battery gets a nice gentle charge and they all balance together very gently so it's better for the batteries and it saves an awful lot of time you need a, a charging board which you can make up yourself quite simply and in this case each one of these uh, terminals all of the positives are connected together in a row and all the negatives are connected together in a row. So that when we plug the batteries in, effectively we end up with one very large battery. And just before we go any further, just a, uh, a word of caution about parallel and series. We're not uh, connecting these batteries in series. Connecting them in series and charging them can, uh, can give some serious problems. It is possible, but it's very difficult to do and not recommended. So. So what I normally do when I've got them all discharged and ready to charge up, I just check the voltages before I plug them in together because what you shouldn't do is plug in um, a high charge battery into a low charge battery. Um, my rule of thumb is keep it between, keep it within 0.1 of a volt per cell. So I'm just going to look at each one of these and on that first battery is 3.76 volts per cell the second one is 3.75 the third one is 3.8 so that's a little bit higher I'm just going to isolate that one to begin with 3.75 Three seven eight. Again, that one's a little bit higher. Three seven five. Three seven five. Three seven five. Three seven five. So that's fine. They're all, all of them, even those two that are slightly higher. The individual cell voltages are within. 0.1 of a volt, which is my rule of thumb for, uh, for plugging them all in together. Um, so what we need to do now is to plug them in. So taking the 
main board. We can now plug in all of the main leads. By leaving the slightly higher charged ones to the last, it reduces any potential problem. Um, so the extra voltage flows into these lower charged cells, but when it's flowing in, you've got a bigger battery pack if you've got a number of them connected. So we've now got one very large battery pack. Uh, same voltage, but about 22 ampere hours rather than 2.2 ampere hours. We've got about 10 batteries plugged in together. A couple of these, a couple of these are slightly higher capacity. This is a 2.65 ampere hour and the others are 2.2 ampere hours. That doesn't matter, you can plug high capacity and low capacity bat batteries in together. The rule is that they must all be the same voltage or they must all be three cells or four cells or whatever you're plugging in together. Never ever plug in um, different number of cells in parallel. So never plug in a three cell into a, a four cell because that will cause a problem immediately. So now what we need to do is to plug in the balance leads in exactly the same way. And I've got a another um, jack for doing that. Uh, this is uh, uh, individual sockets and each of these pins are connected together so all the all pin 1 is connected together or pin 2 pin 3 pin 4 and that's pretty effective you can also make up a lead which is like this which is um, just extension leads and all the black wires are connected together all the yellow wires all the red and all the blue. That's an easier way to do it. But I use this one because I charged 10, 10 batteries up at once so we're now going to plug the balance leads in. <clears throat> so if I check the voltage across the whole pack, it's 11.28 volts, 24% remaining, and 3.75 volts, 3.76 volts on cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, so they're nicely, nicely balanced. Very little difference between the cells when they're all plugged in together. So now we need to plug in the charger. I use an eye charger, a 106B. <clears throat> so that's the main port plugged in. That's the balance lead plugged in. And what I'd do is I would set this on its maximum output, which is 10 amps. OK, and start the charge cycle. So just looking at the balancing of the cells, they're all nicely balanced, 378, 378, 378. And we're now charging at 10 amps. And in about an hour and a half to two hours, all of these batteries will be fully charged. If you were do to, to do them all individually um, it would take considerably longer. You can also discharge your batteries in parallel and uh, with the eye charger I think you can discharge at about one and a half amp or something like that. That would take, take quite a considerable time to discharge this large um, battery 
um, but what the eye charger allows you to do is to put an external resistor um, uh, across the charging circuit so these this resistor um, enables you to discharge it between 5 and 7 amps which is a nice uh, which is a nice rate um, to make the eye charger work in this mode then this resistance must be uh, fairly spot on the resistance across this is uh, 2.1 ohms if it's too high or too low then the eye charger won't uh, won't won't start discharging at all so it needs to be just right and the way that you do the discharge is you put the resistor into the circuit you then plug in the main lead as normal and there is a mode called storage but I'm, I don't use that one what I use is the mode called discharge plus which is uh, if you've got that extra resistance in line and it allows you to discharge in much higher currents the maximum is 7 amps so if I start the discharge process this will now climb up to around 7 amps but most of the work is being done by these resistors here these resistors get nice and hot dissipating the energy from the uh, from the batteries